Dear students, let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 7th March 2017. The first article, Cracking the GDP Mystery. You all know that the Central Statistical Organization has given the GDP growth rate as 7.1% which is unchanged from previous forecasts. So then doubts are being spread on demonetization and its impact on Indian economy. So in this context we have to differentiate the GVA and GDP. So GDP is equivalent to GVA plus indirect taxes. So the GVA though decreased, the indirect tax collection has increased enormously. That's why the GDP forecast remained stable. And second, in the quarterly forecast, there is an emphasis on the GDP, that is formal sector. And during demonetization, the worst affected is the informal sector. And the third thing is, urban India has strongly got adopted to the demonetization through digital payments. And the real impact is on the rural India. But however, the good monsoons have provided for a good agricultural growth of 6%. And finally, what it can be stated is, few sectors like construction services, real estate, manufacturing took a hit. But however, the 7th Pay Commission uh, recommendations and their implementation has provided a good growth in public sector and the government spending has simultaneously increased. These all have provided a way out for us to have a good growth in spite of demonetization. So that is what is this article's emphasis is on. But I can say it this way. Once the first revised estimates comes up, then we will have a clear picture because it will also take into consideration the informal sector and figures of informal sector into consideration. All those who are out of tax net, you understand that the finance minister of India has repeatedly said that India is a tax avoiding country or Indians they take pride in intelligence, intelligent taxing, what has been called as our smart business, which implies tax avoidance. And Prime Minister also has stated that around 24 lakhs of the people in India report the income greater than 10 lakhs. And Chidambaram, when he was Finance Minister in 2013-14 budget, he stated that India has only 42,000 800 people having incomes greater than 1 crore of rupees. Are they are abnormal is the first question. Understand that per capita income in India is around 1 lakh rupees. The minimal taxable income is around 2.5 lakh rupees. So it means that the taxable income and per capita it is 2.5x which is very high if compared to the world economies. In China it is just 1.25% more than the per capita income. And then 10 lakhs means it is 10x more than the per capita income. And 1 crore means it is 100x more than the per capita income. If we compare the figures in India with UK and USA, the advanced economies, there is no abnormality in India. And 3% of the total population are only paying the taxes. If you compare this particular 1 lakh and 2.5 lakh difference, it also do not appear abnormal. So in this context, lowering the tax base to bring in more people into the tax net is the way forward. And added to that, Indians are majorly involved with agriculture and agriculture is kept out of the tax net. So the agriculture also shall be brought under the tax net, though it is not recommended. So highly profitable and agricultural income shall be brought under the tax net. Because agricultural income has become a way out for the tax evasion. So that can be recommended over here. The last mile concerns. The GST is going to get rolled out very soon. But however, business has its own concerns. Because it is going to come into effect from 2000, July 2017. So in the middle of the financial year, then obviously it will be an accounting challenge because till July we have to make it in the world pattern of system and from July a new pattern has to be established. And second thing is, anti-profitering clause is there. It means that once GST comes into the picture, the existing taxes on the products are going to come down. 
So if the business likes to take the benefit or profit out of these tax differences without passing on to, to the customer is a punishable offense. But however, the rules under this anti-profiteering clause are not very clear. So obviously it can lead to the authority of the misuse of the authority of the tax officials. And another thing is, we wanted to have one tax, one rate and one country. But however, it is one tax, one country has come up, but one rate did not come up. We have four different slabs, over and above for the sin goods like tobacco, alcohol. We have got um, another cess. And the parliament has recently passed a law where it has been permitted to impose GST up to 40%. So it means that um, there is a chance that the rates can be further revised. So the article suggests that to provide for the tax predictability at least for five years, the government shall not revise the existing rates and it shall work towards moving for one single rate throughout the country. And finally, the sectors such as real estate are been still out of the tax net. So this also we need to bring them under tax net. The next is the Tawang test. So the Tawang track in Arunachal Pradesh is, re, is claimed by China as integral part to the Tibetan autonomous region. And recently, China also has sent the signals that if India is going to be flexible on the eastern front, it will be flexible at the other places. So, the McMohan line has come into existence as a border between Tibet and India by negotiations between British India, Tibet and China. At that point of time, that is called Shimla Conference in 1914, the Chinese representatives kept the initials, did not sign the document. And China says that it is an imperial imposition, the McMohan line is. And it considers Tawang as the lower Tibet. So Dalai Lama is about to visit Tawang. And before 2009, he made multiple visits. In 1959, he fled, when he fled uh, Tibet, he entered India through the Tawang tract. In, nine, in 2009, he traced back that particular journey. After that, he did not visit the Tawang. And recently, US ambassador also has visited Tawang and China raised the objections for the same. Now, Dalai Lama's visit to Tawang is seen by China as a pressure tactic of India. And India is trying to use the Dalai Lama card as a negotiation tool. But however, India's policy stance did not change. And... The previous Limis, Dalai Lama, His Holiness Dalai Lama has visited Tawang many a times and China did not raise much of the objections. At this point of time, these are unwarranted. Already 2016 has passed with many of the irritants between India and China. In China's objections to India's entry into NSG and also China's technical hold on declaring Mr. Azhar as an international terrorist under 1267 committee are still the irritants. In this context, this unprovoked uh, action from the China is unwarranted. Now, let's get to the open ed page. Here, the first article, Cost of Internet Shutdowns. Today, internet has become a lifeline and a communication channel for personal and also business communications. In this context, for law and order, to prevent the spread of rumors using the social media, the government is cracking on the internet regularly. These shutdowns are bringing a huge cost to the economy and we need to be careful about the same. And the rights of the people on the use of the internet need to be recognized through a law and the law has to be enacted through the democratic means. And the government shall not take the regulation of the internet as its sole propriety and the, the citizens and their needs also need to be recognized. In this context, many of the countries have recognized the fundamental right to internet and in India also similar discourse on the internet as a rights pers from rights perspective is necessary. And coming to reforming funding of polls and parties. So this article here we talk about the electoral reforms in India. The first thing is till 1985 corporate donations have been banned in India. It along with the license raj is the reason for the growth of electoral corruption. And the second is, in 1985, though it has been relaxed, all the disease has got deep rooted in India. So now the way forward is, we have to bring in transparency with regard to the funding of political parties 
And second is, the small donations from the people need to be encouraged. It can be encouraged through tax incentivization. So the way forward is small donor contributions to the political parties. And political parties, if they depend on the donations from the people, they like to or they are bound to serve the public interest rather than the narrow corporate interest. That is what is the article talks about. Now coming to the business page. So though the startup policy has come into existence, none of the companies or very few companies has got the startup benefits that is tax incentives. So the existing definition of the startup is any startup shall be less than 5 years old and annual turnover shall be less than 25 crore and it shall be working towards innovation, development, deployment or commercialization of new products, processes or services driven by technology or intellectual property. So here the word is innovation. It means it do not apply to the traditional business. And the second thing, what is the definition of the innovation is not clear. And the ceiling of 5 years and 25 years also not appropriate. With regard to the drug development etc, it takes years together. So these concerns need to be addressed. So the definition of the startup may be revised by the government. This is what the article talks about. And then the next page I have given you the notes. And please go through that. And these notes will be posted at laix.in slash civilsprep. And then on the civilsprep video page, on civilsprep YouTube page, you have economic survey notes or economic survey video is posted by Sandeep sir. Please take a visit on to it. And all the economic survey, India yearbook, current affairs uh, consolidation for this one year will be covered through this. So try to go through this. And then, uh, these are the news for today. Today my Dropbox was not working, so I did some jugad. And I just have uh, downloaded the newspaper directly onto the recording tool. Thank you very much and all the best.